Stress is necessary. So you got to be willing to go get it every day. There's a story my father told me all the time. Now, I've heard it several different ways, but I'm just telling you the way my daddy gave it to me. He said, son, he said, every morning on the plains of the eastern Serengeti Desert, there arises a gazelle that realizes that he was run faster than the fastest lion or he will be eaten and he will die that day. On that same desert arises in the morning a lion that realizes that he must run faster than the fastest gazelle or he will starve and he will die that day. He say, son, the moral of the story is no matter who you is, when you wake up in the morning, you needs to be running. What he taught me was a work ethic of, of how to work in order to get to where you want to go. But you got to put yourself under some stress, though. See, stress is necessary. See, I'm a seed. I really am. I, see, but a seed has to be planted. A seed got to have dirt put on top of it. If you take a seed and throw it on the concrete and walk off, the sun just burn it up. But guess what? Logically, in my mind, it doesn't make sense that to grow something, you should dig a hole, put it down in there, and cover it with dirt. Logically, that don't make no sense to me. But oh, though, see, dirt is necessary for growth and development. If you want to kill a big dream, tell it to a small-minded person. I told everybody at 10 years old I was going to be on TV. I had a little problem when I said that. I had a severe stuttering problem. I could not talk outside of my house. I went to school, church, anywhere. I locked up. I couldn't go to the store. I, I, I just stuttered profusely, man. I, it was a horrible experience for me. So when I wrote on that paper, the assignment was right on a piece of paper what you want to be when you grow up. I'm 10. I wrote, I want to be on TV. That was that faith, the belief in things that you cannot see. I ain't see no way I could be on TV, but I wrote it down. I didn't know no better. I just, I'm 10, I wrote it down. Teacher called me to the front of the class. I thought I'm gonna get me a gold star because she had everybody stand and read their paper and their name. She called me to the front. I'm thinking, I'm going up here to get a gold star. I ain't never had one before. This must be, my answer must have been really good. I can't tell you how wrong I was. That lady didn't call me up there to give me no gold star. She called me up there to humiliate me. And when I got up there, that lady lit into me. She said, why would you write something like this on your paper? First of all, why you call me up here? You know I can't talk. You already know I can't talk. And she just said, why would you write something like this on your paper? And I'm standing out. I, I'm trying to get it out. She said, who in this school ever been on TV? I, I, I. Who in your family ever been on TV? I, I, I. Who in this neighborhood ever been on TV? I, 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 I. She said, look at you standing there. You can't even talk. How they going to put somebody like you on TV? So every Christmas, I send her a flat screen TV. I want her to see what God had done for me. I want her to see that no matter what she said about me. Attitude determines your altitude. If you're a positive person, positive things happen to you. If you're a negative person, negative things are going to continue to happen for you. If you can put that in your scope this year, just change your attitude. Wake up and smile. How about just wake up and be grateful? Life is really 10% what happens to you and 90% what you do about it. Look, everybody in this room, everybody watching, everybody got something they got to deal with. Get to dealing with it. Stop complaining about it. Complaining about it only makes it stay present. Don't give up when reaching your dream is difficult. Listen, if success were easy, you've heard it a million times. Everybody would be successful. It requires a grit and a toughness to be successful. But I got news for you. It's something that all of you have in you. Now, whatever you've been through, whatever that is, guess what? You're still here. Whatever you think Riches is, that's your definition. There's a survey that says riches and success is being happy. Well, all you have to do then is determine what is it that makes you happy and start down that path. Now, to find true success, I believe that you've got to do some work.
because it's not free. Uh, everybody would love to wake up and just be happy and bubbly, but it requires some work. So I want to share with you something from my book, uh, chapter 11. There is no self-made man. Now, most of us want to believe that we're independent, that if we set our minds to do something, simply it can get done. Well, I got news for you. Unless you look to others, you can work twice as hard to get half as much. Sometimes you need a partner in a deal in order to aid you along the way. There is nothing wrong with asking for what you want. You know, for a long time, I used to think that the path to success was going at it alone. Because I was always busy priding myself on not asking for help. I was homeless. I didn't want to ask for help. I lived in a car. I didn't want to ask for help. And I almost missed out. I didn't realize how many people were willing to have discussions with me about success. You know, most people that are successful, if you ask them for help, they'll give it to you. I'm talking about advice, principles, solutions, not money. Don't walk up to a wealthy person and just ask for money. You know how many times they didn't got that? But if you're interested in learning how to fish, a lot of people that teach you how to fish as opposed to... giving you a fish sandwich because they know if they give you the fish sandwich you're going to eat it you're going to have to come back right. a lot of people have helped me along the way magic johnson oprah winfrey the president i've had some conversations with some people who have it together and, they, and they've taught me many things about succeeding now you might think that requesting help is a huge ask but it's not people don't mind sharing knowledge what is knowledge unless it's shared if you have knowledge but you never share it how we know you got it and just remember, there is no shame in wanting something. This whole world is based on wanting something. You know, don't sit up and listen to some group, you know, wanting something is a sin. No, it's not. You got to want something. The scripture says a man without a dream or vision shall perish. So the day you quit wanting something, you might as well push your chips up to the window. It's a wrap. So lose the shame and you will have access to more power. And so here's the key that I want you to tell you about. Success is all about building relationships. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Some people might not step up when you ask them for help. They might not. But guess what? The worst thing can happen to you. If, if somebody refuses you, you didn't have it anyway. Well, what are you worrying about that for? Well, they might say no or they might turn me down. Ask people. You never know. Suppose they say yes. That could be the turning factor. But, you know, there are some principles that will increase your chances of getting a success. Know your worth. Don't let nobody else determine it. And don't assume anything. People aren't mind readers. They don't know what you think. And don't assume they know unless you ask with specifics. And then recognize that no is not a rejection. Every time you hear no, it moves you one step closer to a yes. Everybody can't say no. Now, unless you got a harebrained idea. <laughs> and just remember that success is about...
that looks the way you want it to. Nobody else. Never be afraid to reinvent yourself. My career, my entire career is a study in reinvention. You know, I started out as a comedian. That was it. I never planned on hosting a radio show, hosting a game show, or hosting a daytime talk show. I never did. Writing books, none of it. Making movies, none of it. Reinvention happens when you diversify your gift. There lies your greatest secret for success. You've got to discover your gift, and when you discover it, you got to soak it. You got to wring it out, man. You got to diversify it. Most of us only have one talent, but do you know that that's all you need? Mine happens to be to take information and immediately transfer it into other kinds of platforms. Now, when I was younger, I actually thought that I could only do that with comedy. But as I've gotten older, I discovered through diversification that it was a little bit more than that, that I could also take information immediately, transfer it into inspiration. I could turn it into motivation. I can offer it as guidance. So now, sitting on a talk show, I actually have something to talk about. All the failed marriages. I got something to talk about. The being homeless. I got something to talk about. Being dead broke. I got something to talk about. Having bad credit. Tax problems. I got something to talk about. Whatever hole you've been in, I didn't just about drug myself through it. But I came out of all of it because I was not afraid to diversify my gift. One of the other tricks for reinventing yourself is not letting your background become a limitation. If you take that background that you're from and never let it define you, but allow it to redefine you, all that stuff works for the good. Do you understand that you needed everything that's happened to you to happen to you in the exact order that has happened in order for you to be the person that you are today?